I took a job at British Airways and uh, one day a week I went to an Ealing Art School, you know, part of the training, who gave me homework and that was to go down the airport on a Saturday and shoot people saying goodbye and people crying, you know, all that reportage stuff. And in doing so, I shot a picture of, it turned out to be Rad Butler sitting amongst a load of African chiefs who were asleep. Reporter comes up and says, I'd like to buy this picture. So I give him the film. Next thing I know, I've got a weekly Saturday job for the Sunday dispatch down the airport taking pictures. And then I just, you know, worked with a guy who found me there because they wondered who this young kid was taking pictures. And I worked with him and he died. So then suddenly I had a job on the Daily Sketch. And I was the youngest photographer in Fleet Street by 10, 11 years. The next guy was 31 or 32. And, uh, and then after four, three years I left there because I felt newspapers weren't my cup of tea. And I just picked up, you know, it was all when the American film companies were coming to um, England and, and they wanted sort of what they call special photographers. You know, I'd be paid a good deal of money to go and work on a picture for two weeks and then to, to publicise it through all the world's magazines. And that was the sort of start of my uh, career. And I went to Hollywood when I was 24. And I, met, you know, I worked for a, a, a colour supplement there, the equivalent of the Sunday Times supplement, but it was the Los Angeles Times. And I just, you know, and everyone wanted to talk about the Beatles, Stones, Mary Quant and all that type of thing. And to be honest, I thought we'd have to get a proper job one day, you know, because, I mean, it was all so much fun. I mean, it was ever work. And uh, anyway, that started that. And then I worked on films and I, I just became very successful at it. One time I got uh, a chance to work with Paul Newman who was producing this film called Pocket Money. And I went on the set, I flew to America, Denver, I think it was, and I walked on the set and Lee Marvin, who was the co-star, was not talking to anybody at all. It was the whole film set versus Lee Marvin, including Paul Newman. So I thought, I'm only here for a couple of days because they wanted a poster for the film, you know, which is really top money at the poster. And so I sort of, I thought I'm here a couple of days, three days at most to do this, and I'm not going to be intimidated. So I walked straight up to Lee Marvin. I said, hi, Lee, I'm Terry O'Neill. I'm from England, and I've come here to shoot a post of the picture. He says, you English? Oh, no, I didn't say I was English. I said, I'm Terry O'Neill. So he said, you English? And I said, yes. He said, I love the English. He said, right. He said, let's, what do you want? And then, I mean, the whole film was at my disposal then. I just put them up against a pink wall and shot them. And they're so great posers. I mean, you know, they were just themselves and it just made a simple, great picture. I mean, I met Faye Dunaway. I was doing a story on her for People magazine, which, were, which is every, before every Oscar, they used to do this, they used to put the girl who they thought would win on the cover, and if she won, great, and if she didn't. But, I mean, nine times out of ten, they proved right. Anyway, I said to Faye, uh, I said, if you win this, I said, I've got a great idea for a shot of the morning after. You know, it's you sitting alone by a swimming pool with the Oscar on the table and, you know, the coffee and all that stuff. So she, of course, she agreed at the time, not thinking she was going to win. And she won. And then fortunately, or unfortunately for Peter Finch, who died, I mean, I had the newspapers with the headlines of Peter Finch died. So the picture sort of became even greater. And that's, it. I know I took the picture, but I think it's the best Oscar picture ever taken. You know, it sums up everything. It's that moment where she wakes up and she's sitting there and she was dazed the next morning. I mean, it, it does, if, you know, they go from earning $500 or $20,000, $100,000 to millions of dollars a movie. And they're just dazed. They just don't know which way to turn. And I sort of captured that on one picture and I was really pleased with that. When I first started, everything was black and white. 
And then what, after working a time in America, I realised that I had to shoot in colour. So um, I shot 35 and all that, and you know, all that really worked out well. But then I found that, that, that uh, Annie Leibovitz, who, whose work I admired, used strobe. Well, I mean, f funnily enough, I mean, I used strobe before her. She got the idea off me. And I, because I was shooting something on Elton John in a plane, I had to light the thing and all that. Anyway, I really liked the effect, the strobe, the mixture of daylight and strobe. I thought that was really slick photography and I could limit the colours, believe it or not. I could have a fabulous blue sky, just tinge down all the exposure slightly so the trees took a shape instead of all the detail. And, you know, it just...